Hey YouTube, it's Mike White with 143. So today, I'm going to show you how to professionally convert an SVG from a PNG, and then you can use it in the layout designer as an SVG, and not worry about the size, because an SVG is a scalable vector graphic, and it can be any size that you want it to be, where a PNG has a fixed set amount of pixels, and if you upscale it, it's going to lose quality unless you use an AI upscaler, but that's in other tutorials. All right, so today I'm gonna to use completely free software, Photopea and Inkscape. So you can download and install Inkscape, and I think you can download and install Photopea somehow too, but I just use the online version because I don't need another application on my computer. And I actually use Photoshop, so bear with me when I fumble around in Photopea but they're very similar. So learning Photopea, you're really learning Photoshop. And if you know Photoshop, you're probably gonna do pretty good in Photopea. All right, so today we have an image. We're gonna open it from our computer. And it is the Spice Girl PNG. And this image has been ordered from 143 and it's, three, um, it's 300 DPI, I believe. Let's look at the image size. No, it's just 72 DPI, which really doesn't matter. Um, but it's 2,000 pixels. And I think they're trying to get it printed somewhere around 3,200 pixels. Um, so in order to, in order to do that, you know, we have to raise the quality. And it already is a, a high quality image. We really just have to raise the pixel dimensions. So if we click on the zoom tool here and you click pixel to pixel, you're looking at this at 100%, and it is really nice quality. So it looks it looks sharp, it looks perfect. It's just too small. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and choose blending options. And then I'm gonna choose color overlay. And I'm just gonna put black over the whole image. And that's why I chose this image. This one works really easy because all the parts are separate. And there's no, um, there's no overlapping parts on this image, so it's really easy to convert this. And why did I choose black? Well, black's the hardest color, and I use Inkscape to trace, and this just makes Inkscape's life easier and my life easier as a result. So we're going to go trace this in Inkscape. We've turned on the black layer. We're just going to save this. So let's do export as PNG. And all these settings should be 100% quality. I don't see any problems here. Let's just hit save. So that showed up in my downloads folder. And I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to call it Spice Girl Black 2000. That just kind of keep me organized. Now I've just opened Inkscape from my computer. And it automatically starts up with this new document. And I'm just going to click once in the center here and then use my minus key to scale back. So I'm just moving um, the camera essentially back so that I can see a bigger part. And I'm scooting this over by just dragging this bar. So I'm going to open my downloads folder and just click and drag and drop that onto the stage. And I'm going to choose embed. Now I usually hit Control Shift R at this point. I'll just click once and then do Control Shift R and that'll fit the stage to the image. But another way you can do it is go to File, Document Properties and just click this box, Resize to Content and that'll fit to the image just the same. Okay, so now we're ready to trace. So we just wanna select our image and I'm just gonna pop over to the Trace Bitmap tab. And if you don't see that, you go to Object, excuse me, Path, Trace Bitmap. So it looks like it's Shift-Alt-B, but I don't remember that. I just keep it open in my tabs because I use it all the time. All right, and it is you know, selected what I wanna trace. I'm just gonna hit Apply. And now you'll see I've got a path created. So I'm over here in my layers and objects. And I think you just get there. You got object layers and objects if you don't have that open in your window here. 
and you can see here's the image and here's the path it created. So let's just talk about what it did. I'm going to delete the image and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm clicking the stage and hitting the plus key on my keyboard. And now I'm going to choose the node edit tool and then just click on the path. And I know this probably seems like common sense to most of you, but you can see um, this now has nodes and these nodes are editable. And what that means is like, it's just math. It's a vector now. It's not a PNG. It's not a bitmap. It's not a raster image. It is a vector image. And what does that mean really is that it's just math. This is literally now a text file. If we save this image, I'm just gonna save it as Spice Girls. Oop, Spice Girl. SVG and I'm putting SVG because some people don't show their extensions so it actually says Spice Girl SVG because in some people's computer setups they haven't turned on the ability to see what kind of file it is you know on mine I have it set where I can see dot SVG and you should see it at least in this window but once you've saved it you know on mine you see dot PNG and you know dot svg and that's something you can turn on in your folder options if you're using windows but i just did this to show you if you edit this with a notepad or a text editor you're actually just going to see coordinates and that's why i say it's just math i mean literally these are the coordinates for all of these points that we're seeing you don't need to do this i'm just trying to drive the point home there's no pixels anymore. These are just points in space that can be manipulated and, and bent if you need to. Okay, so I'm gonna click off of that and hit Control Z because I don't need those changes. And I'm gonna go back out. And now we need to get the colors back. We've got this vector file that can be scaled to any size with no loss of quality, but we just need to color it. So to do that, I'm going to drag the original file back in. I'm putting the original file just on the stage so that I can use it to pick colors from. So there's that. So this is the only tricky part. This is where it gets a little bit difficult and we're going to have to play with some stuff. So I'm just going to click on the path. It's all one path and you can see that over here. And I'm going to hit Control Shift K. And what that's done is it broke it into all its separate pieces. So what defines a separate piece? You know, this little circle right here, that's a piece, you know, because it's not connected to anything else. So it's actually just created all these paths from that one by separating it. And that's what the Control Shift K command does. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z and show you another way to find it. So you click on the path, and then you go to path and you go to break apart and there's that well they say shift control k but i use my pinky for control so i always say control and then shift k all right so now that we have it broken up we need to actually stitch it back together by color so i'm just going to click and drag i'm going to hold shift and click and drag and just select this bottom part and that should have all the pieces of the girl it's got the inside of the G the inside of the G's tail it's got the little dot above the eye and I'm just gonna hit control K so control shift K breaks apart and control K combines so that's just combined that into one path so I can name it and that's pretty it's really a good idea especially when you're starting to put something back together it's nice to name these things so that you can stay organized. And you can see it's popped it up to the top of the layer stack. So that's now sitting on the very top of the document. Not that that matters in this case, I'm just pointing it out. All right, and so I'm just flipped over to the fill and stroke. I think that's under object, object fill and stroke. And I'm just going to use the color picker tool down here and click that eyedropper and click right on the girl. And now I've got the brown girl. So this next step is unnecessary, but it will help you if you're struggling to stay organized. 
So I'm just going to add a layer. I call it layer two, that's fine. And I'll take this girl and just drag it up and drop it. And you can also, I think, do move to layer. Okay, so that's up there. And I'm just going to turn that layer off and lock it. And that's just kind of like isolating the rest of this to make it a little easier for me to make my selections. This is slightly tricky because we have these, um, you know, interior parts surrounded by this brown. So this is an easy file in general because everything's not overlapping. But it's also got some tricks and it's, it's not, you know, super easy. So let's just start combining this up, to, up here. So I'm just going to click this outer edge first and click this outer edge. And I know those are my two brown you know, pieces right here. And I'm going to hit Control-K to combine those. And then I'm going to start getting my color going. So let's put the color on that one. So we just switch to the fill layer and use the eyedropper tool. And then let's get the color on this one. And let's get the color on this eye. All right. And so if I want to get organized now, I could call this C. And then I can select that I and call that I. All right. I don't know where my C went. I might not have committed to that. Let's do C. All right. And then I'm just going to move those up to this other layer. And they should disappear because that layer is turned off. So I'm just kind of cleaning up my workspace. So these other layers are where things get tricky. And so I've just clicked once here and it's selected this path. And I can just hit the eyeball to understand what that path is. You know, that's the outer rim of this brown. And then if I turn, I'm suspecting that this next one right below it, that is the inside of this brown, okay? So those two paths I know are going to be combined. So I'm just going to turn them back on I've got them selected over here and I'm going to hit control K and now we can see the inside. So I'm going to hold shift and drag and select both of these boxes. And I suspect there's multiple cuts inside there. I'm not sure, but I've got the extra, you know, brown outside. So all of this is combined. Now I'm going to hit control K. And we don't see any change, but we know that those pieces are now combined. And so now I'm actually going to move that layer to the bottom. And there's a reason for that, because I'm going to combine it with my brown. So here's the brown and here's that layer. And because the brown layer is on top, that stroke, that outer part, it's going to actually be in charge when, they, when I hit Control K and combine them and make it the same color. So I just didn't lose my fill that way. And now I'm going to select this E. I'm going to name it E. And I'm going to move it up to layer two. Well, let's color it first so we can see the change. Boop. And layer two is locked, so we don't want to put it up there and then try to change it. Okay, so that's just now out of our way. And you can see why I'm keeping this brown out here is because it's just a strategy as I add these from these other layers. So we'll just do the same thing. We'll select here. I'm going to select this one as well. I'm going to turn the eyeballs off on those and select this and this. And then I'm going to turn the eyeballs back on and hit Control K. And I think I've got more to do here, but I'm going to just drag this down. Let me drag it. And then Shift Select and hit Control K. And that's all joined. So I'm just going to drag this path right here all the way back up to the top. And then I'm going to shift select these internal paths. And see, I'm going to shift drag because those at least have centers. I just noticed that those have centers like I was expecting on the E. But it looks like from the original, those, those centers were lost at some point or, or never existed. So now we're going to hit Control K on that, and all that's combined. And we know we have a little more in here. So let's just kind of dig into this. There's that center part. 
And I believe that needs to be actually combined with this other path. So let's hit Control K on that. And then that center part right there, we know needs to be combined with our brown. So now the brown's done. And now we're just gonna select this one, change the color, select this one, and change the color. And I think at this point, we're ready to put our whole image together and all we have to do is open up this other layer. And there's no reason that you can't you know, do further organization and name these other paths. And, and that's, that's a good practice. You know, if this is your artwork, that's what I would do. And you, know, you don't need to keep these layers separated. There's no stacking order here because everything's at the same flat level because nothing's on top of anything else. So um, that's another thing to consider is the stacking order when you're at this point, if, if it's necessary. All right, so I think that's it. We're gonna clean this up by just hitting delete on this. And then we're gonna tighten up the whole document by just deselecting everything. And we can use that Control Shift R, or you can go to Document Properties and say Resize to Content. And you've got a perfectly scalable SVG that you can use just like this. Or you've got something where you can export a PNG, but now you can export it at any size. And you can just ignore the DPI, you know, say 3600, that's 12 inches wide. And just, you can name it. I'm going to call it PNG. You can browse for a folder. And then you just click export. And that's it. All right. Hey, I hope this was helpful. I want you to know we really appreciate your orders at 143vinyl.com and we are going to keep fixing up your artwork if need be and providing you great content so you can take care of it yourself. Thanks and have a great day.